Hello geologists, this is Mark Leeson of MTech Software and today I'll be presenting Quick Log, which is Module 1 of Geographics. This software makes it very easy for you to create boring log and well log diagrams in your own custom formats. First, I'll demonstrate Quick Log's simplicity and efficiency by creating a new log. Then, I'll show some sample logs which illustrate Quick Log's range of features. With this information, you will be able to see whether or not Quick Log can be used to produce your specific log format. We are confident that it can, but if you are unsure, please contact us. To fully test QuickLog before purchasing, please download the free Geographics demo at mtechsoftware.com. From the main menu, click Download, and then select the current version. After installation, run Geographics. QuickLog will start by default, and the first file in the project folder is automatically opened. In this sample project, the first file is underscore bore1. We know that it's a boring file since its file name ends in BOR. For convenience, all of the project files are listed on the right side of the screen. So let's create a new log. First, let's set the default zoom to screen width so that we can see the logs better. Select Utilities, Graphic System Setup, then after opening a file, zoom to screen width. I'll click on OK, and I'm going to click on underscore bore 1 again so that it's reopened in the new default zoom, which is screen width. Okay, so to enter data, just click on the area that you want to enter. So to enter a boring name, click here, put in a sample name, click on OK, and the new boring name is added to the diagram. You can do the same thing in this next section, the boring information section. Click on date started, enter a date, click on OK, and the date is added to the diagram. So now let's do some descriptions. So the top depth of the first layer is zero. Let's choose a fill pattern code. I'll choose SC. Um, then I can start entering some descriptions. Now, I don't have to enter the descriptions manually because I have pick lists of often used geological terms that I've defined myself. So I'm going to click sandy clay, brown, find a medium grained, slightly moist. Now these pick lists here not only speed up data entry, but they also help you to keep your descriptions more standardized bet between geologists so that all of your descriptions come out the same way even if you have different geologists working on the same project. I'm going to show you briefly how you can edit these items. So you click on this but button that says edit items and you have these five columns of item lists. This is set one, set two I have blank, and set three I have blank. So actually you can do up to 15 columns of items. So I'm going to show you a file that I did that has more pick pick items and you simply go file open description file and here's another one that comes with the sample project so this is set one set two set three is blank so there's there's ten columns of items and again you just tailor this to the way that you do your own descriptions and you can tailor it to uh, specific projects because some projects will have different materials than others. So I'll click on exit and that will be the new default um, item, item list that will be used. And again to add items to this is very easy. Here, here's the list. Here I put in test here. Test 2. Let's add another item. Test 3. Save. Exit. You see test 2 and test 3 are now choices that I can use. Now I can also add in a special description at any depth by putting in a number on its own line. So let's say I'm going to do a, uh, let's add a node at 4 feet. I do minus 4, go to the next line, add in the note. Now we're going to go down to the next layer by clicking this arrow. So let's make the top of the next layer at 5 feet. We'll click on OK. 
and we see that our new layer has been added with the description note at 4 feet and it ends at 5 feet. So let's move on and add some sample data. So in this case we've defined two user parameters to be dry density and percent finer. You can define up to 16 of your own user defined parameters and then you just start putting in some data. So let's say that our first sample is 2 feet starting at 0 and ending at 2 and we'll put in some blow count values let's say 5 and 7 so there'll be a blow count at every foot put in a dry density value a percent finer value and we can also do a second layer let's say it starts at 3 ends at 5 and you could put in more blow count values than 2 if you want to do blow count values every 6 inches for example another uh, dry density and a percent finer. Let's click on OK and you can see that sampling data has been added and the blow count values are spaced every foot or every six inches. Lastly let's, let's uh, add a well diagram. So first we'll put in a well name, put in an elevation, and then we'll start to put in some outer layers which are typically the grout, seal, sand pack, centralizers, or packers. So we'll start at zero which be the uh, ground surface and say the grout goes for 12 feet and we've got a seal from 12 to 14 and say a sand pack from 14 to 28 feet. I'll click on OK and you see there's the well name, the elevation, and the three outer layers have been placed. So let's add uh, the inner layers now, which are going to be the PVC casing and the screens, caps, and possibly pumps. So first we'll do the overall PVC casing, give it a, a start of negative one, which means it has a stick up of one foot above the ground. We'll have it end uh, at about 26 feet and we'll place the screen from 15 to 25 feet. Click on OK and there is our finished well diagram. So you see that it takes just a few minutes to create a log diagram and there's not a steep learning curve. You just open a starter file click on the area that you want to edit and then save under a new file name. This file system is also very straightforward. Each of these BOR files corresponds to a log diagram. For example, I click on TB1 and it opens the TB1 log. Let's look at these boring files in the sample project folder found under documents mtech samples. The bore files are very small, only 4 to 6 kilobytes each. This, mean, this lean and mean file system is a big advantage when working from home or out in the field. There is no bulky database or Excel files to manage. You can quickly share these files with your colleagues via simple email. Now that you've seen quick log in use, let's view some other sample logs to find one that could be used as a starting point for your specific log format. First click on TB2. This log has a different header and it also includes a site map. It features a multi-parameter graph and a log scale blow count graph. It also has a more complex well diagram featuring two casings and one borehole in centralizers and surface casings. It also features a footer. Just to give you a quick idea of how the header and footer are set up, I'm going to click on the Edit Layout button to reach the, the Header Footer Layout Editor. So at the top, you're able to choose the orientation, so it can be 8.5 by 11 portrait, 11 by 8.5 landscape, 17 by 11 landscape, or 11 by 17 portrait. So you notice each of the elements of the header 
correspond to the elements on the diagram. So right here we have a boring name with some boring information, then a large box of boring information, and then a map. So all of these elements can be drug and placed onto this representation of the boring log to create the format. I'll click on OK. You see that I moved I removed the map and I removed the footer. Go back to uh, our template log. You see we're gonna let's look at its uh, layout and it's a little bit more simple. We've got logo, logo, client, client, then boring name and boring information one. So you see that the layout of the log can be done very quickly and easily via drag and drop. Now let's open another log. Okay, this is TV3. Its orientation is landscape instead of portrait. And it has a unique graph called the sieve analysis cuttings graph. Let's open TV4. This log is very detailed with the sample column. It shows the overall sample, then the portion of the sample that was sent to the lab, then the portion of the sample that was unrecovered. Now click on TV5. This log shows the specialized Atterberg limits graph, and it also has uh, detailed uh, sample boxes, which show a sample description or a graphic description of each of, each of the sample types. Next, click on TC1. This log has a more specialized header. I'll click on an element here. So then you go to the custom header design layout editor. And this lets you control every line, every bitmap or rectangle, all of your text, and all of your legends. So you can create any type of header or footer, but it will take you a little bit more time than the simple drag and drop method. The next log is TGR1. This illustrates the uh, very specialized graph, the grain size and lithology graph that is typically used in the petroleum and mining industries. So if you have need for this type of work, Quick Log is uh, one of the few logging programs that can do this type of graph. Next, click on XS5T. This just shows the capability of the well diagram. You can have up to four casings per borehole. As you can see it's a very complex well with multiple screens, multiple seals, multiple casings. Now click on Y2. This log features a very large header. The layout is 11 by 17 landscape. It also shows the bar graph column. Now click on Y3. This log illustrates Quick Log's ability to display logs in any language. In this case, it is Spanish, but you can use any true type font in any type of language. Also, the scale is in meters, and there's no header. Just a very large footer. Now click on Y4. This is just another example of a custom header. And it also has a custom footer.
Lastly, click on Z711T. This log has a gamma and res resistivity graphs. What it does is it pulls in this data from an outside data file containing hundreds of data points. So you do not have to enter all of these. You can use data from an outside text file um, if needed. These sample logs should give you an idea of the range of Quick Logs abilities. Your next step is to spend an hour to create your first log. For instructions, click Help and you will find a tutorial. Or you can view the next video in this series. If you have any questions, please contact MTech. Thank you for viewing. If this has been informative for you, please like and subscribe.